Hi there, my name is Graham Jackson and I'm an engineering specialist here at MapleSoft. And today I want to talk a little bit about Digital Twin for Virtual Commissioning. So why do we care about virtual commissioning? Well, it all comes down to the cost of design changes. The graph here is sort of a made up set of numbers. Uh, you can associate them to your own company. But the idea behind it is that as you get farther along the design process, you get to the prototyping and product design, it gets more and more expensive, probably exponentially so, to make changes to that design because you've got to go all the way back doing a lot of rework in that process. And if you send a product to market and there's an issue, you might be facing a shutdown or even a recall to deal with. Typically, a lot of these problems start coming in during the commissioning phase when you're actually starting to put things together. Your controller code, so attaching it up to the physical system, you're building prototypes. That's where you start to see, ah, this motor isn't quite powerful enough. Or man, there's a glitch in how this controller is responding to that input. The key idea behind virtual commissioning is that it allows you to start identifying these problems earlier. And of course, earlier means it's less expensive to make changes when you find those problems. Now it's not just about money, and I should say that these techniques have been going on in aerospace and automotive for a long time. Research actually shows that doing some more of this work up front can save you dramatically in the long run. And it's not just about that money, uh, it's the cost of rework, uh, but also the cost of over-engineering. Either your margins are thinner since you're using bigger motors than you intended, or you're pricing yourself out of certain competitive deals because you're just not sure that you've correctly gauged the dynamics of your system. There's of course damaged reputation if you send something out and there's a failure. And if there's a window of time that you're trying to hit, it's much less predictable to get there because you don't know how long that integration phase is really going to take. What do I mean by Digital Twin? Well, Digital Twin is just a virtual representation of a corresponding physical product. And when I'm talking about Digital Twin, I'm not talking about the version that comes from this bank of data that you use machine learning to gauge behavior. I'm talking about the digital twin that's built from physics-based models. And the advantage here is that you don't need a prototype to start using the digital twin. You can use it as early as the conceptual development phase. You could play with it before anything is actually even built. Of course, it works well with virtual commissioning, but even after the fact, you can actually have these models running online after production to help with diagnostics and operations. So overall, we hope that they will bring you smarter designs. And of course, these are the models that you put together for the virtual commissioning process. So in a nutshell, this is when you take these virtual models and you connect them to your virtual PLC. So you can do all this testing of your PLC and control with the real virtual system before you ever hook it up to a physical prototype or download that PLC code to a physical PLC. So that's virtual commissioning in a nutshell. And that's the thing that we're talking about, to sort of save and find those design failures and integration problems earlier in the build phase. So let's go into virtual commissioning just a bit more. It starts off in the conceptual phase. You can go through rapid iterations of the design. A lot of people that we talk to, they use Excel or FEA for this right now. And what they're missing is some of the accelerations and dynamic loading. So this is where the digital twin can be used in the conceptual phase. And of course, you can hook that right into your controller and even perform testing on your PLC code and hardware. And then the last thing you can do happens actually after you commission your product. You can use it online to help with diagnostics. You can use it inline to avoid adding more expensive physical sensors to your product. There's really a lot of things you can do with these models after the actual commissioning phase. Let's take a look at what some of our customers have done. And I'll try to pull some from different areas outside of automation so you can get a feel for different applications. Here's one from FL Smith. They do mining equipment, and two really important things about that is that these are huge structures and they're really far away. So it means that building a prototype isn't really feasible, and it means that failure is really expensive. If something breaks, you've got to send someone out there, ship out a ton of material, and you really want to avoid these kind of failures at all costs. They used our tool to create these digital twins where they could help model their hydraulic system for a new product they were building. 
they were able to fine-tune their design ahead of time and even find some failures that would have happened if they had actually built that design in the field. And of course, it's always nice when we can get quotes from our customers who've had success with their products, so we thank them for that. Uh, a quick example from the machine design world. This has to do with a customer who had a product built and were finding they were getting failures with their motors when they sent the products out. And actually, a deeper analysis after, it showed that they were missing some spikes in the current draws on the motors. They went through their commissioning phase, test cycles, and it all worked out. But after it ran, it failed earlier than what they predicted. It had to do with the fact that they didn't have an accurate enough model of the actual torques that the motors experienced and were required to deal out because they were using just Excel to do this sort of static, steady state analysis. So they just weren't capturing detailed enough accelerations. So by being able to probe that better with our software and to do that testing up front, not only were they able to say, hey, I can just adjust the motion profile, I don't actually need to add a bigger motor, but they were also much more confident that when they sent new products out, that they weren't going to experience the same sort of failures. And the last example, a little beyond virtual commissioning, something where you want better performance out in the field. In this case, these are wind farms, and a big thing we're trying to avoid here is downtime. You've got these things, you know that the bearings are eventually going to wear out, and if you can accurately predict when these bearings will give out, you'll get two things. One is that you'll be able to predict your maintenance cost over a period of time, but two, it avoids that downtime when turbines are stuck and not generating electricity. So I hope that gives you a quick whirlwind tour of virtual commissioning and the kinds of things you can use it for. Really the nutshell idea here is that you're taking a virtual prototype of your machine, you're hooking it up with the virtual PLC, and you're doing the testing when it's still very inexpensive to make design changes. Now we've at MapleSoft been doing this kind of thing for a long time, over 30 years. We're not just a company that's come out of the blue and wants you to take this new thing on. The real question here, though, is how can you actually make virtual commissioning a reality for you and your company? Uh, obviously, we have tools that can help you do that. Modeling tools that allow you to build your model, accounting for many different domains of your design, and tools that allow you to bring into your automation software for testing on your PLC code. But we also provide training for how to actually build these models how to actually hook all of this together in the first place. Uh, we often encourage customers to do a pilot test with us, say for just a couple weeks, to get a feel for how virtual commissioning would work for your company and your culture. We can also help in the advanced phases, say getting inline models running to do better diagnostics. There are a lot of places you can go to bring some of these benefits to your design process. So really, like we encourage you, give us a call, and let's talk about how you can implement these technologies into the things your company is doing today. Thanks so much for your time, and we'll hope to talk to you soon.